Gboard is now officially on Wear OS, which means the typing experience on your wrist should have received a fairly substantial upgrade. So we've gone hands on to find out if it has. Thanks for watching 9to5 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. Google's sole wearable platform feels very much like it's neglected in favour of other areas. While there are some good options out there, when recommending a Wear OS watch, it's always been fairly tough to be confident that the experience would be consistent enough for many people out there. By replacing the inbuilt keyboard with Gboard, Wear OS is getting one of the very best input options on mobile right there on your wrist. It's quite the change from the basic option that has been there on Wear OS for quite a long time now. On small watch displays, a good keyboard is going to be a necessity. For years, the stock option on Wear OS really hasn't been good enough for most of you out there. That said, what little typing I have done hasn't been that terrible, just not that great. Gboard on Wear OS is a completely new experience and one that makes typing on your smartwatch feel much more fluid and in most cases pleasant, which is something I couldn't always say previously. It's worth noting that Gboard will replace the default keyboard on your smartwatch. If you don't like it, there is no way to revert that we can see beyond uninstalling some of the app updates. Visually, there are a number of key differences, including the font used and the spacing of virtual keys themselves. The spacing between keys should be dynamic depending on the size of your Wear OS watch display, but remains fairly consistent across a multitude of wearables that we have tested. The update package itself weighs in at around 11 megabytes, which given the new features, you'd kind of expect it to be larger. I still found the swipe gestures to be especially useful, but with some added spacing, it makes the swipe typing slightly more accurate in my brief testing period. If you do prefer to type or touch the display at all, don't worry as the experience is really smooth and accurate, even on what we'd normally call outdated Wear OS hardware. It's hard to deny just how much more pleasant it is to use Gboard over the built-in Wear OS keyboard. Typing on a smartwatch has almost always felt like a chore, and this upgrade really does help improve things quite substantially. I can't say for certain if the word suggestions themselves which have appeared on the top bar are better, but they remain solid just as they would when using Gboard on your smartphone or indeed a tablet. I'm less likely to pick or use these suggestions though, simply as the new keyboard is more accurate at picking up my taps and indeed swipe gestures. Gboard on Wear OS also includes a quick emoji panel for the first time, which I think might be one of the most popular new additions, especially if you use any messaging application on your wrist and just want to send a quick reaction rather than a traditional text response. There's also a dedicated number pad that saves time having to long press keys or accidentally text character key presses. Voice input is now fully integrated into Gboard here too. You can still select voice typing individually if you like, which does mean of course you don't need to switch between voice or keyboard when using a text input field such as the Play Store for instance. I think this helps streamline things more so than actually typing for many people as you can just switch between voice and keyboard on the fly from one screen rather than having the process of requiring multiple and indeed unnecessary steps. If you're bilingual or multilingual, you might want multiple languages when using Gboard on Wear OS and long pressing this spacebar allows you to add more regional dialects and keyboards. It will though honour your system language setting first and foremost, so you'll need to add additional languages should you want access to them. That's not all though, as if you do use a pin for watch security, the move from the generic Google keyboard to Gboard now does mean that there is a brand new pin entry screen here too. Each key is outlined with larger legends on those keys, hopefully making it easier to stab at each number should you want to enter them. Overall, the change from Google Keyboard to Gboard is very welcome, but addressing the keyboard itself will probably won't resolve some of the lingering performance related issues that some Wear OS watches do suffer from. Google is gearing up as well to announce some new changes to Wear OS at IO 2021, which bodes well for the system long term. With Samsung also expected to adopt the platform with the Galaxy Watch 4, Gboard on Wear OS feels like a much needed step in the right direction for future Android power wearables and the usability and viability of the platform long term. That said, have you tried the new Gboard for Wear OS yet yourself? If you have, let us know down in the comment section below how you're getting on and how you're enjoying it. Is it the upgrade you were hoping for or just another false dawn for Google's wearable platform? 
With all that said and done though, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching this super quick hands-on with Wear OS's new Gboard application and I will speak to you later.